name is Patrick Nicholas, I'm a photographer and I'm the author of The Belle, which is a series of photographs, uh, nude photographs, based on famous works of art. But what I'd like to do is, I like to take a woman who isn't a conventional beauty, I mean somebody who's a bit, maybe got a few love handles around here, uh, you know, maybe, you know, she's not a Kate Moss, she's not 20 years old. Uh, she might ha you know, might be 40 or 50 plus even. You know, something's interesting about them, something is, is really captivating about this person. And I like to feel that I've got an eye for it. I often just literally bump into these people. I mean, I sometimes see them in a restaurant or something like that and I they come in here into my gallery and I say, oh wow, you know, you've got a really amazing Botticelli face, for example. I'd really like you to pose naked for one of my pictures. And it's, it's actually incredible how often they say, well, yeah, okay, you know, maybe, you know, um, sometimes they even, you know, talk to their wife, husband, boyfriend or something there on the spot. And uh, I would say, the brazen approach actually, you know, works. Um, I that said, I've had the old problem, you know, uh, irate boyfriends, people pulling out at the last minute. Sometimes, you know, the pictures be done, and then I, I had one case: uh, the woman in the um, fascista picture. She got terrible stick from her um, from her mother-in-law. Actually, it was always a husband. The husband was quite quite okay about it, but the the, the mother-in-law, who owned this big uh, big business in uh, Bologna, said, "If you do anything like that again, I mean, that'll be the end of it, and uh, you, 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 my, my boy will divorce you, and all the rest of it." But anyway, we'd done the picture by then, so it was all you know, it was all water under the bridge. As these pictures over the years have had a fair amount of uh, press coverage, uh, I get offers coming from abroad and people actually get in touch with me. I, I've had uh, emails from Australia, from America, New Zealand, people have seen my work in Vanity Fair or Madison Magazine or something like that and they get in touch with me. Um, they say, oh, I saw you on TV, um, my husband does happen quite often. My husband says, "I'd love a picture of you in one of, in, in one of these poses, like uh, Patrick Nicholas does." So uh, we exchange emails and things like that, and then eventually I try and arrange a meeting. That's not always the case. I mean, I had a woman come from America. Uh, she saw this is the interesting thing. She saw me in an Australian magazine, and then said, "I'd like to come from America." She was in Honolulu. Uh, and I'd like to pose for you one of your pictures. So she came all this way, I'd never seen her before, she sent me a couple of pictures. And actually, that all my pictures in some ways are a blind date. I never ever ask for anybody to send me anything revealing beforehand. I, I like that element of um, suspense, almost tension. You know, I, I might see a poor woman even in winter and she's all sort of covered up in in furs or whatever. I mean, what is this woman going to be like? Uh, but I do like that element of suspense. So. Sometimes I use men in my pictures. In fact, a journalist was talking to me on the phone from Portugal the other day and he said, I've noticed I, I've been watching your website for the last few years and I noticed you had some men in your pictures. And I said, yeah, it's true. I, I, I rather like the idea of the man being in there, the, the man as the voyeur. In fact, there was one picture by, uh, uh, I, it was my, um, my version 
of the uh, Susanna and the Elders, and she's sitting there by the lake, and there's a there's a fisherman sitting in a boat, and he's he's looking at her, and I made a difference between my picture and the original by Tintoretto. My picture, there seems to be a sort of um, you know, she knows she's being observed by this man. How can she not be aware that he's lying in his fishing boat just a few yards away from her? And there's a sort of... Whereas in the original painting, there's a feeling of threat. The, the story is really quite a horrible story for the Bible. But in my picture, I like the idea that a woman likes to be lying back there in all her beauty. She's rather plump, you know, she's not a conventional beauty, but she likes the fact that she's got this man who's looking at her. And when the pictures were pu uh, published in um, in a magazine in London, I can't remember what it was, Condé Nast magazine, uh, and they put on the captions, the photographer is looking at his model from the boat, which <laughs> gave the idea that it was me that was uh, was, was was in the boat. Uh, and so actually, it gave me an idea for the title of the picture. I called it Alter Ego, because in fact, the fisherman is is my alter ego. You know, I am the voyeur. But there is this consensual relationship. I've been asked too, uh, who my mentors are. Well, obviously my mentors are the famous artists of the past, which, rather immodestly, I consider myself perhaps being an extension of. But, not just the Manets and the Tintoretto. I mean, I adore uh, Wallace and Gromit. I think Wallace and Gromit, if I had to name one mentor, I would say Wallace and Gromit. And the reason I say that is because I've watched Wallace and Gromit thousands of times with my now six-year-old daughter. But Wallace and Gromit pays great attention to the details. There in a Wallace and Gromit cartoon, there you can find all sorts of things, so you can happily watch this uh, cartoon over and over and over and over again because every time you watch it you find some little little detail something that makes you smile something that uh, is comic and that's what I like to do in my pictures if I can I like to get lots of details in there so that if you uh, do a nice big blow up of one of my pictures you can actually uh, you know you can almost examine it with a magnifying glass and you can say Oh, you know, why does it say that? And for example, in the in the Fascista picture, which is based on um, an Odalis by Angra, I sort of uh, updated it to fascist times. And I went along to Mussolini's widow's house, and they gave me all these objects. I have to say they were totally nice. But then I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm not a person fascist, so what I did was I put in a couple of small details in her shopping basket. Um, I put a little bottle of castor oil, for example, which um, you know was used by the fascists uh, on their victims, um, just to, just to you know, nail my colours uh, to the mask, so to speak. There's another picture which I've got, not just a man, but several men in my pictures, which in, in fact I think was the most enjoyable picture I ever took, and we'd like to do some more along the same, same lines, is another a fisherman. I don't know, there seems to be a fisherman coming into my life, maybe because I live near the sea and also near a lake. And this fish, these fishermen uh, were held on a sort of leash while we prepared the model. Uh, sort of hidden, so they couldn't actually see uh, what, what was going on, but they, they did get a look at her beforehand, they could see that she was a beautiful girl. Uh, and she could see them, which was actually a bit of a problem, because she started saying, oh dear, you know, look at all these funny old geezers looking at me. Um, have I got the courage to go on with it? But of course she did. Uh, and I really had fun doing the casting with that, because I went, I went to the captain of the boat, and I said, look, can you find all the ugliest, hoariest old fishermen you could possibly find and bring them along for a show this afternoon? And I, I didn't realise, actually, how ugly some people can be. And they were absolutely terrific. You know, they were, 
they gave all the outright reactions and um, I think in some ways actually that was one of my most useful pictures. But it wasn't easy convincing the model to do it. You know, it's one thing doing a picture in the privacy of your own home and, and that's how it was going to be at the beginning and I had to tell her, look, I'm afraid that picture we can't do anymore. Um, I, I'm going to put you in front of about uh, eight or ten uh, fishermen down on the coast and, and she went, oh, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm not doing it. Uh, but in, in the end, she did. To be frank, I don't really like to be too risque. Uh, a lot of these pictures have been published in quite ordinary women's magazines especially. And I like to feel that I'm uh, woman friendly in that sense. I mean, I, I'm not out to create scandal. Uh, I, I'm not out to make portray women in a bad light. Actually, you know, completely the opposite. I'm really, I, I like the fact that it's women that like my pictures, and women like them in, 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 to an extent more than men. I mean, if it's a journalist, for example, I often find that it's for a, a woman's magazine. And for that reason, I was actually quite taken aback when YouTube uh, took me off, uh, not once, but twice. So now I've got a six month ban on YouTube. For something that had been there for I think two or three years, so somebody must have uh, got in touch with them, and now I'm um, I'm considered a, a reprobate on on YouTube, which I think is, is completely unjustified. <laughs> I had one really good idea, it was this one. That the women that I use in my pictures are not professional models. Uh, they were unpaid, so apart from that, else, they saved me an enormous amount of money. And they are normal women. I mean, they come from normal works of life, they're working women, they're with the old housewife in there. They come in all shapes, shapes and sizes, they are of different ages. They are, they are what makes the pictures. I, I try to come up with an interesting idea, I try to be funny, I don't know whether I succeed, but there's one thing that's always constant, is that these women are real. And I think that's what really has brought success to this project. Future is I'd like to take the idea of the Belle to other countries. Uh, at the moment I'm going to Holland, uh, there's a lot of interest in the Belle in Holland, and I'd like to do in America too. Uh, I've already had Americans coming over. I think there's this interest in northern European countries in the United States in, in, in the beauty of Italy. Uh, Italy has the most fantastic landscape. It has, it's known for its good food, it's beautiful women, uh, and I'd like to bring, uh, I'd like to bring foreigners into Italy and bring them into this uh, wonderful Renaissance landscape, photograph them in a, you know, in a, in a, in a Renaissance villa or something like that, in, in this quite unique environment that is Italy. And, my message is really, I will make you into a work of art.